The head of the tax office, Dame Lynn Homer, is stepping down from her post in April. In the meantime, it's business as usual. Today, she appeared before the Public Accounts Committee, where MPs challenged her record on tackling tax fraud. Christina Cooper reports. Dame Lynn Homer is a veteran of Commons Committees. In previous public sector jobs and in her current role as Chief Executive of HMRC. And although she's heading for retirement, MPs didn't spare her from the usual cut and thrust. We you have don't not the believe. faintest idea. Yes, we do. Way... Actually, that is wrong. Do you want to listen to the question? Uh, what... Sorry, I will oh, listen the to question, the question. Yeah. That was a Conservative, Stephen Phillips, a QC and one of the committee's most robust inquisitors. HMRC has set a target of increasing the number of fraud prosecutions to 1,000 a year. Mr Phillips wondered where that figure came from, and he suggested that Lynn Homer didn't have the faintest idea what the right number of prosecutions was to deter other would-be fraudsters. And he reckoned that view was backed up in a report by the National Audit Office. That yes. is what the agreed last sentence No, it doesn't. Paragraph the words faintest says. idea are not in the last sentence, and I disagree with them strongly. In her many appearances at Commons Committees, Lynn Homer has been resolutely polite in the face of tough questioning. But this time she came out fighting. She told the committee she was bridling at the remark that she didn't have the faintest idea. I took the report as a whole. I agree with what the report says. I dislike shortened versions of what I've agreed being put as words into my mouth. Well, I'm... <laughs> there we go. Bad luck. Let's there we on. go. Yep. They moved on to extra government money to help HMRC tackle more complex cases, which typically involve wealthy individuals and companies. HMRC wants to increase prosecutions in that group from 35 to 100 a year by 2020, which led Stephen Phillips to draw a conclusion. Wealthy individuals and corporates have hitherto been getting away with tax evasion without being prosecuted. HMRC's Director of Fraud Investigations, Simon York, had a go at answering that one. I don't think that's, um, that's, that's right at all. And actually, um, if we just look... Well, um, so the, forgive me, Mr York, it must be right. Are there, are there 65 people who are suddenly about to start engaging in tax evasion? We, we, sorry, Jenny, we, I mean, we, we, we deal with quite a lot of cases um, of wealthy individuals, and I can give you a stream of examples if you like, but um, one that was in the press just very recently, just before Christmas. No, Mr. Long... I don't want an example. I just want you, you can either disagree or agree with me, but it's absolutely obvious to everyone sitting around this oh, table. I, I, I disagree with you. But the MP stuck to his guns, drawing Lynn Homer back into the discussion. There are a lot of wealthy individuals who are evading their taxes, who are not prosecuted. You can agree with that, Damien, and it will reflect credit on you. And I, I said a few minutes ago, and you, I think, probably didn't hear me, so I will say again, that across the whole spectrum, we do not prosecute everybody in every category. So there will always be individuals that we don't prosecute. Uh, wealthy, less wealthy, not so wealthy. Labour's Caroline Flint tried to reassure her that questions about tackling tax evasion by the rich weren't a trap. Public pressure and unhappiness uh, in this particular area is going to lead to more prosecution. And that will mean that maybe some individuals in the way they carried out their affairs in the past will not be acceptable in the future and prosecutions will result as a result. Please don't be defensive about that. I'm, I think that's I'm a not. good thing. I'm not. Lynn Homer told the committee that she just didn't want the message to get out that there were certain people the HMRC wouldn't go after. Christina Cooper reporting. And finally, should there be a national anthem for England? A Labour